Hi, I'm Matthias from Sonoworks, and these are the brand new Biodynamic DT900 Pro Xs. At $300, they fit in between the DT990 Pros and the more luxurious DT1990 Pro in Biodynamic Pro Open Back range. The thing that sets these apart from the other two is that these will go loud no matter what the device you're going to be using, even a smartphone. So if you're someone who needs headphones that will go loud no matter the device you're going to be using and you really don't mind the lack of sound isolation, these are the headphones to get. However, if you're a SoundID reference user and you'll be using these headphones primarily with the computer and audio interface setup, you'll get even more accurate sound from the likes of Biodynamic DT880 Pros or any of the Sennheiser HD600 series or even Audio-Technica's R70Xs. All right, that's the short version. Let's dive into details. Let's start with the build. Apart from more modern aesthetics, there are three updates that elevate these headphones above the entry-level DT990 Pro. First, you get a detachable cable, which is great to see, as it's usually the first point of failure. The next upgrade is the headband adjustment mechanism, which feels on par with the premium DT1990 Pro. On some pairs of 990 Pros, the yokes slide into the headband with excessive resistance, especially after some time of use. Well, not the case here. And the last update that's less obvious, but still very welcome, is that ear pads no longer rest against each other while headphones aren't being worn. Let me explain why this is important. On the older designs, both 990 and 1990, the ear pads will press against each other, especially if the yokes are adjusted for larger head size. It's easy to overlook it as non-issue, but this leads to premature deformation of the ear pads, and that alters the frequency response of the headphones. If you're using headphones with sound ID reference calibration, this means that the calibration profile accuracy will suffer, and you'll need to replace the ear pads every few months to maintain it. So it's good to see that this is fixed with the DT900 Pro X. And speaking of ear pads, the new ones are amazing. The velour that's used to cover them is plusher than on the older models, even the premium DT1990 Pro. The updated plastic headband with the faux leather covered cushion is nice, but not a meaningful upgrade over the DT990 Pros. It's awesome that replacing ear pads or headband cushion takes even less effort than before. In the box, you get two straight cables. They come in 3 meter and 1.8 meter lengths. A shorter 1.2 meter option is available from Bayer Dynamic Aftermarket, but since these headphones use a common mini XLR connection, finding a third party cable that fits your needs is easy. Along with the cables, you get a screw on quarter inch adapter and a cloth bag. So the main question, how do they sound? Well, in one word, bright. Highs are boosted, mids and bass are fairly neutral. However, the sub bass is lacking. Let's take a look at the frequency response graph and check it out in more detail. This is the frequency response graph of the DT900 Pro X. Let's start with the lowest frequencies. The sub bass extension is as good as it gets with open back headphones, but it doesn't mean that it's perfect as the lowest frequencies are lacking more than 5 dB. If you're working with sub bass heavy material, this can be an issue that keeps you from getting the very bottom frequencies just right. Moving up to the bass and low mids, the new Bayers remain remarkably neutral up to 400 Hz. Then, with a gradual slope, the high mids get carved out progressively more and more until 4K. While this is not ideal, at least the shape of the curve is very smooth in this region. So, the introduced coloration is predictable and relatively easy to compensate for if you are aware of it. Things do get more problematic in the treble range. Looking at the higher frequencies, we see Bayer Dynamics sticking to their traditional target and applying a generous boost from around 5 to 12k, which will brighten up the top end of everything you hear. These headphones can color some elements of your mix with a pleasant sheen, and this can trick you into making a track that sounds dull and lacking in treble when played back on other systems. Or, another example, when mixing using DT900 Pro Xs, distorted guitars can sound overly harsh, so based on this, you may overcompensate, leaving you with a guitar sound that's less aggressive than you were looking for. Treble is the trickiest range for DT900 Pro Xs that will take the most time to get used to. All these shortcomings can be dealt with by using SoundID reference plugin that will make them sound more neutral. However, there's one thing that will keep these headphones from achieving true greatness compared to others. There is this thing we call adaptiveness, and uh, for me to explain this properly, I would need a whole nother video, so I'll try to keep it brief here. In short, 
every listener perceives frequency response on different headphones differently. But the scale of this difference can vary greatly from model to model. For the best performing headphones like the Sennheiser HD650, this difference is negligible, and most listeners will hear the same when using them. But other, less adaptive models can introduce a few dBs of inconsistencies between different listeners. But why should anyone care about this adaptiveness? Well, if you're after the most accurate headphone sound that your headphones can produce, you'll be using your headphones together with a calibration software like SoundEdit Reference. But the effectiveness of the calibration is going to be determined by two factors, adaptiveness and manufacturing consistency, or in other words, how the frequency response of the headphones are going to be perceived between different users and how consistent the frequency response of the headphones are going to be between different units of the same model. With DT900 Pro X, the manufacturing consistency is top-notch and the adaptiveness is good, but not near perfect as it's with Biodynamic DT880 Pro. When used with SoundID reference, also the DT990 Pro and the DT1990 Pro will deliver a bit more accurate sound than the new DT900 Pro X. Next, let's talk about comfort. We asked some people in our office to test these headphones out for a couple of hours, and all of them found them to be very comfortable. However, this is no means a guarantee that you'll like them as well, because comfort for headphones is very subjective. Your mileage may vary. How does the new DT900 Pro X stack up against the rest of the Bayer Dynamic lineup? The comfort of the DT900 Pro X is only surpassed by the more premium DT1990 Pros during extended listening sessions. That's due to more comfortable headband. Other than that, they all feel very similar on the head, and truth be told, all Bayer Dynamic Open and Semi-Open Pro headphones are very well ventilated, don't exert excessive pressure on the user's head, and can be worn for hours on end. Okay, what about the competition? What are the alternatives to the new DT900 Pro X? Well, open back headphones that do not require a lot of power to be loud enough, it's kind of a new thing, so there are only two headphone models in this category. Those are the Austrian Audio High X65 and Mackie MC450. The Mackies are the more affordable option, but they don't go as loud as the other two when connected to mobile devices. Also, the bass extension is weaker and the build is not as nice. Austrian Audios, on the other hand, have a really premium build and they're as loud as Bayer's when plugged in in a low power device, but they are considerably more expensive. In terms of sound, all three pairs are top heavy. However, if Bayer Dynamic boosts the top end by about 6 dB, the other two do about 10 dB. Bayer also beats them in the high mid range with its relatively smooth curve. So all in all, all three are bright. However, Bayer is the most neutral of the bunch. Well, in summary, if you're someone who really needs headphones that will provide enough volume regardless of the device you're connected to, the DT900 Pro X's is our pick. Just bear in mind that the noise isolation is practically non-existent. While they sound quite bright, at least the coloring they introduce is balanced and somewhat predictable. If you're not using calibration, this can make them easier to work with than the closed back alternatives, like their sibling headphone Bayer Dynamic DT700 Pro X or Audio-Technica M50X. To sum up, they sound amazing with sound ID reference, they're modern, cool looking, and as versatile as open back can get. They're a great set of headphones. However, if the only device you're gonna be using these headphones with is an audio device, then you really don't care about how easy to drive these headphones are. And instead you could trade the efficiency of the DT900 Pro X's for an even higher level of sound quality. If the ultimate sound accuracy is what you're after, then the good old Bayer Dynamic DT880 Pros paired with SoundEdit reference calibration gets our recommendation. Yes, the cable is not detachable and they don't look as cool, but the near-perfect adaptiveness will grant near-perfect sound accuracy and you'll save some money. Or, if you don't mind spending the extra, go with any of the Sennheiser HD600 series models or Audio-Technica R70X. All right, that's it. You'll find a link to an in-depth review in the video description below. What headphones should we do next? Let us know down in the comments. 